this the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this the is money the money game. game. But I, we in the something. money game. People say that money changes people. It really doesn't. You know what I learned about money? Money don't change people. Money allows you to be more of who you really are. I'm very much in a space right now where I'm not doing anything that's gonna compromise my peace and happiness. Period. Rumors are swirling that Lori Harvey might have spilled the tea on Steve Harvey's tumultuous path to stardom. What's more, whispers suggest that Harvey could be caught up in a scandalous scheme to pimp out his stepdaughter to high-profile insiders in the industry. So what exactly is going on? A couple of months ago, model and entrepreneur Lori Harvey sat down with E! News host Adrian Balon in a video interview and said she often hears claims that she is in a relationship with someone whom she hasn't even met in person. Lori, who on a few occasions was spotted with the bad boy honcho, insisted that she never dated the musician, a revelation that has now left fans wondering if that was indeed a confirmation that Diddy may not be who we all thought he was. However, that was not the story in the media then. According to reports, rumors began circulating that Lori had started dating Sean Diddy Combs in July 2019. The pair were pictured together numerous times in Italy, Mexico, New York City, and Atlanta during their alleged romance. During one of their vacations, Lori was spotted with her arm around Diddy during a dinner with Lori's stepfather, Steve Harvey. Diddy's son, Christian Combs, even gave an insight into their relationship during a red carpet appearance, saying, They are good. They're just being private time. That's up to them. While the pair never publicly spoke about their relationship, people close to them mentioned that they might have only been a fling, as opposed to being a full-blown couple. Him and Lori had a fun fling, but Diddy is still healing and focusing on himself right now. Now, explained one insider. He is not ready to be in a long-term committed relationship and is focusing on his kids right now. However, it seems all of that might have just been a cover-up for Diddy's alleged other s inclinations, as fans started to point out that Diddy used Lori for a different purpose than most of us think. One user tweeted, Y'all really think Cassie said a prayer and is an example when I really just believe she was Diddy's cover-up cause he's gay, she's out of her contract, and now Lori Harvey up next. Anyway, aside from this, there have been rumors that Steve Harvey might also also have been romantically involved with Diddy at one point. Essie Berry, a civil rights activist known for helping victims of injustice, has spoken out about his shady masculinity. She has dropped a truth bomb that Steve's ex-wife Mary and his son have discovered a secret door in the house with a digital lock on it. One day, he was out of town. Mary, Steve's niece, and his son were home, and they luckily figured out the code. When they got inside, Mary saw a big desk with Vaseline in the drawer, and what was most shocking to see, there were photos of naked men on the computer screen. She say, men. I said, what? I said, what are you talking about? Additionally, Barry revealed that Steve allegedly had a romantic relationship with Bill Cosby. Steve had a dinner date with Bill Cosby and his wife. So everybody chilling, sitting down in the living room, chilling, Bill doing his thing. Mary revealed their relationship. According to Essie, who is an activist, Mary came to her for some help regarding Steve and her nasty divorce. Mary ended up revealing too much. According to Essie, Mary told her that one night she went to Bill Cosby's house to meet his wife. But there she saw Steve, Bill, and his wife having a dinner date together. After some time, she joined them too. Steve was standing with Bill's wife, and Mary was standing with Bill. Mary told her that Steve made Bill's wife drink, and he was chilling with her and having a good time. After making Bill's wife a drink, Steve grabbed her hands and took her to the bedroom. According to Essie, Mary got frustrated with this incident and left immediately because her husband was doing inappropriate activities. It seems that Steve used some substance in her drink to make her sleep, but Steve did not do it because he was attracted to that woman. Instead, he wanted to spend some time with Bill alone. And when Mary left Steve and Bill were together. But according to Mary, Steve came home hours later draped in a funky smell. A suspicious smell always came from Bill too, and Mary asked Steve what he was smelling like. But Steve replied with a weird answer. So who was you smelling like, Steve, when you came in after Mary left? Because you was at Bill at homegirl house. So she said you had a little old about yourself like after this question from Mary, Steve could not even turn his eyes to Mary's because he was smelling suspicious, and his eyes had something in them which proved that he had a gay relationship with Bill. Mary said he didn't look himself, he looked disorientated, he had a funky smell about himself. I said, well, man, what you think happened? She said, you know what happened. In any case, Lori isn't the only one who has exposed Steve Harvey's shady ways. For context, it seems like Samuel L. Jackson isn't entirely buying into the Steve Harvey charm, whether it's the professional persona or the real-life dude. Now, we've seen hints of Jackson's feelings over the years, but things hit a whole new level recently when he spilled the tea about his encounter with Harvey on the way to the ocean. A few years ago, photos surfaced online showing Jackson and his wife relaxing with Harvey and his wife at a vacation destination. At the time, with limited 
limited information about their relationship, everyone assumed they were close friends. Headlines even exclaimed, Life on the Ocean Rave, pal Steve Harvey, Samuel L. Jackson, and Magic Johnson enjoy July 4th on luxury yacht with their wives. It painted quite a glamorous picture of their friendship, didn't it? Fast forward to recently, and Samuel decided it was time to clarify the situation. Turns out those ocean encounters weren't planned at all. According to Jackson, he and his wife were simply en route to their chosen vacation spot of the year when they coincidentally ran into Harvey and his spouse. And let me tell you, judging by Jackson's expression as he revealed this, he wanted the world to know that their meeting with Steve wasn't some carefully orchestrated Hollywood rendezvous. It was a pure, unexpected accident. Steve. Steve Harvey. I hear y'all take vacations together on the yacht or something. Well, we get on the boat with Magic and Cookie. Steve and Marjorie have their own boat. Now this brings up the question of why Jackson may not be Steve's biggest fan. Turns out Samuel L. Jackson's not-so-warm feelings towards Steve Harvey might have a lot to do with a certain someone, Bernie Mac. And guess who wasn't Bernie's biggest cheerleader? Yep, you guessed it, Steve Harvey. Here's the lowdown. Back in the day when they were part of the same comedy group, Harvey apparently had a one-track mind, getting Bernie Mac out of his way. Now that's pretty messed up, considering they were supposed to be a team of professionals chasing success together. But according to the grapevine, Harvey had a reputation for being all of about himself right from the get-go, and it goes way back. Let's rewind to the early 2000s. If you were tuned in back then, you might remember the legendary original Kings of Comedy show. But if you missed it, what you know about Steve Harvey's journey is just scratching the surface. Picture this. Harvey, along with three other comedy heavyweights, became legends with their comedy tour called The Original Kings of Comedy. The dream team included D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and the man of the hour, Bernie Mac. He showed. The most successful comedy tour it ever is. at that point? Yes, it was at that point. Okay. This wasn't just any comedy tour. It raked in big bucks and left a lasting impact on the comedy scene. Now here's where the plot thickens. Rumor has it that while they were making people laugh on stage behind the scenes, Harvey wasn't exactly playing nice. The tension reportedly centered around Harvey's efforts to shine brighter by dimming Bernie Mac's spotlight. So, here's the deal. Harvey, with his smooth moves and aggressive audience banter, was considered the suavest performer in the original Kings of Comedy. But then you had Bernie Mac, whose style was like a comedic roller coaster, diving into intense jokes that touched on some real-life stuff. Now, rumor has it that Harvey might have caught a serious case of envy over Bernie's unique style, and what started as a minor issue snowballed into a full-blown feud. Also, Cedric the Entertainer, another OG from the tour, spilled the beans, and now the internet's buzzing with this comedy beef. Turns out those long-standing rumors about Harvey and Bernie Mac not exactly being BFFs during the Kings of Comedy tour might have some truth to them. Cedric recently spilled the tea on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay. According to Cedric, the feud between Harvey and Bernie wasn't just some backstage gossip. It was real and had its consequences. It even prevented the Kings of Comedy crew from hitting the road for another epic tour. Imagine the laughs we missed out on. But wait, it gets juicier. Back in 2003, Bernie Mac spilled some tea of his own in an interview with GQ magazine, claiming that Harvey was jealous and tried to mess with his movie roles. Steve, not one to stay quiet, addressed these claims in a 2010 interview, expressing how hurt he was by Bernie's words. But fans weren't entirely buying Steve's side of the story. So, given Samuel L. Jackson and Bernie Mac's tight-knit friendship, it's becoming clear why Jackson might not be sending Steve Harvey a Christmas card. These guys weren't just pals, they were practically siblings in the industry. You know, the kind of friendship that's so deep, everyone thought of them as family. I knew he was having some health issues, and I was really concerned about him, but he would look at me every day and say, I'm good. Let's go, let's hit it. And we would hit it. And uh, it was a joy to work on that movie with Bernie. They even teamed up on the big screen in the movie Soul Men. Now, while you might remember them as bandmates on a wild road trip to honor their lead singer, what you might not know is just how close Samuel Jackson and Bernie Mac truly were. Jackson has been opening up about Mac's life ever since his passing, shedding light on their deep connection. In Soul Men, Jackson and Mac played characters who used to be in a band together, embarking on a crazy cross-country journey to pay tribute to their late lead singer. Tragically, Bernie Mac fell ill and passed away from pneumonia in August after they wrapped up filming. To add a surreal twist to it all, Jackson revealed that Mac never got to see the final cut of the movie. Now that's a whole new level of bittersweet. Jackson, star of The Hitman's Bodyguard, spoke fondly of Mac, labeling him a friend. He even spilled the beans that the Ocean's Eleven co-stars would crack some jokes at Jackson's golf tournament in Bermuda. But outside of their time on the Soul Men set, 
Jackson admitted that he didn't get to spend much time with Mac while he was alive. The guy was booked solid with his show, The Bernie Mac Show, a Fox comedy series that had everyone in stitches from 2001 to 2006. We used to talk about blowing up and being famous and doing all this stuff and all of that, said Jackson. Then when he got famous, he was here in LA and I never saw him because he was too busy doing his TV show every day. I didn't go by and bother him, but I would run into him at functions and we got to get together. That was who he was. And I appreciate that about him. And I love the fact that when I came to Chicago and I was doing Negotiator, Bernie took care of me. So remember the ending of Soul Men with that heartfelt dedication to Bernie Mac and Isaac Hayes, two genuine soul men? Well, guess whose brilliant idea that was? Yep, you got it, Samuel L. Jackson. Now, understanding the depth of Jackson's connection with Mac makes it crystal clear why he might not be thrilled about the Steve Harvey comparisons. And if you take a closer look at their life journeys, you might just see it too. Bernie Mac was no ordinary comedian. He's like the captain of the Pioneers Club in the comedy world. Known for his iconic TV series, The Bernie Mac Show, and the legendary Kings of Comedy Tour, later turned into a film directed by none other than Spike Lee. This Chicago comedian was a titan among his peers. Sure, today, it looks like Bernie had a smooth ride to becoming an icon, but the reality was quite the opposite. When I, when I think of in terms of big, you know, it, it, it really wasn't a doubt. I knew I would. <laughs> Bernie faced formidable challenges right from the start of his life's journey. Losing his mother early on placed him in a difficult position, necessitating him to juggle numerous odd jobs just to make ends meet. It was far from easy for him. However, Bernie came to a profound realization amidst his struggles. Humor could serve as a steadfast companion through life's tumultuous twists and turns. Consequently, he made a conscious decision to channel all his energy into stand-up comedy, steadfast in his resolve to spread joy and entertainment. As the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. Bernie Mac's impact transcends the laughter he brought to our screens. It symbolizes resilience in the face of adversity, the ability to transform hardships into humor, and the lasting influence he left on the comedy landscape. Comedian. I, you know, I'm not a black comic. I didn't want a black show. Mm -hmm. I want to show. I make everybody laugh. Although Bernie fell in love with the idea of being a comedian when he was just eight, but he didn't dive into it as a career until later in life. When he did, he had a clear vision. I'm a comedian. I'm not a black comic, he declared. I didn't want a black show. I wanted a show. I wanted to make everybody laugh. I never watch what somebody else does. It does not matter. Bernie Mac got to do a thing. <laughs> So what did you think? What was your ultimate goal? What did you want to do? To be the best. According to Bernie Mac, motivation didn't involve comparing himself to others. Throughout his comedy journey, from its inception to later stages in life, he adhered to two straightforward objectives, striving to be the best and remaining authentic to himself. Television, not his concern. Bernie remained focused on his own path, uninterested in monitoring others' endeavors. When questioned by Oprah about his ultimate aspiration, Bernie's response was unequivocal, to be the best. While fame and jokes held appeal, Bernie maintained that they resonated primarily with a specific audience demographic. He believed his strength lay in eliciting laughter from everyone, regardless of their background or origins. As he expressed it, he tailored his approach based on the audience he encountered. During an interview, a viewer recounted how she recognized Bernie's potential for greatness after attending one of his shows. One might expect Bernie, already established as a successful comedian, to revel in such praise. However, Bernie Mac disclosed that, despite his awareness of his eventual ascension to the top, he didn't dwell on it incessantly. If you do well, the money will come. That's what I know. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And quit focusing on the money. Right, right. Because it's not about the money. My love for comedy is just unbelievable. For Bernie, the end game wasn't the money. It was about getting better at what he loved. In an interview, he spilled the beans that while folks around him were all about chasing that paper, he couldn't stand the idea of money being the driving force. According to Bernie, if you're good at what you do, the money's gonna roll in sooner or later. To him, putting money on a pedestal meant there was something off. That's when I went to New York and signed a contract for syndicated radio. It just gave me a little bit of money. I wasn't making what I make now, I make like 10, 10 mil a year off radio. And that kept me at least be able to survive. His mantra was simple. If you do well, the money will come. Money wasn't the focus. His love for comedy was what fueled him. Now some sharp ears in the audience couldn't help but interpret this as a bit of a jab at Steve Harvey. You see, Steve has been known to highlight the importance of money quite a bit. In one interview, Steve casually dropped that he makes around $10 million a year from radio and called it a little bit of money. Yeah, you heard that right, $10 million, just a tad bit, according to Steve. Now this difference in perspective on money 
says a lot about how these two see the world. But it's not just about the cash for Steve. His life has been a roller coaster of controversies beyond the dollar signs. Despite his public persona as the family man, the beloved comedian, the sweet actor, and the TV host, Steve Harvey's personal life has been a bit like a plot twist in one of his own shows. Yep, accusations have been flying around, ranging from him being labeled a less than stellar host to allegations of mistreating his former wife and kids for quite some time. Talk about a curveball, right? Steve Harvey flew Winton to Texas and Mary saw all the bruises on her baby's back. Now here's a head scratcher for you. If Steve Harvey is the poster child for family values, why is he walked down the aisle three different times? It's got some folks raising their eyebrows. These days, there's chatter about him having a bit of a wandering eye, turning his past marriages into a hot topic. Recently, an activist named Essie Berry stepped up to spill some shocking and dark details about Steve Harvey, and it seems those words might have left a mark on Harvey's reputation. But wait, there's more. Turns out, while Steve Harvey might be the king of comedy, he's also conquered the entertainment world as an actor, producer, and writer, Harvey's climb to success wasn't always smooth sailing. Behind that smiling face is a guy who had to put in some serious hard work to get to where he is today. So, while Steve often paints the ups and downs of his journey as valuable learning experiences, it appears that the reality might be a bit more complicated. Hold on to your hats because the details of Steve's second marriage with Mary Shackelford seem to be a roller coaster. Quickly. He moved forward from me to Marjorie. Uh, that was disturbing. Steve and Mary had a son together named Winton, but their relationship hit a rocky patch early on. In 2005, the couple went through a tumultuous divorce, and Mary didn't mince words about how Steve swiftly moved on to his current wife, Marjorie Harvey. Mary, in her own words, found it disturbing how quickly Steve transitioned from their marriage to his new one. I have just really dealt with so much bullying from Steve. Following her divorce, Mary made a bold assertion. She claimed that Steve had been unfaithful with Marjorie towards the end of their marriage. Steve vehemently denied the allegation, dismissing it as unfounded and erroneous. However, actions often speak louder than words, and Steve's swift marriage to Marjorie shortly after his split from Mary added fuel to the rumors of infidelity. But hold on, there's more to this saga. Mary wasn't finished airing her grievances against Steve. In addition to alleging his infidelity, she also accused him of harm harming their son. Mary returned home after a brief absence post-divorce to find her son bearing what appeared to be facial bruises. She asserted that these injuries were inflicted by Steve, prompting her to pursue legal action against her ex-husband. Taking matters to court, Mary slapped Steve with a staggering $60 million lawsuit, citing a plethora of charges including child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The legal battle was nothing short of a roller coaster a ride. In response, Steve countersued Mary and to everyone's surprise managed to obtain an injunction against her. The court ordered Mary to maintain silence regarding the case, raising eyebrows and prompting speculation about the true nature of the events. The need for a gag order hinted at the possibility of Steve's involvement in the incidents Mary had brought to light. Following the case, Mary spoke out, emphasizing her right to speak freely and expressing skepticism about the imposed silence. This entire saga left a trail of unanswered questions. Why the secrecy? What fueled the intense legal battle? It all cast doubt on Steve Harvey's image as a relationship expert, prompting some fans to question whether his personal life was as pristine as his advice column suggested. In any case, despite his many controversies, Steve Harvey has truly had an illustrious career. Since his youth, Steve Harvey harbored a fervent desire to grace television screens. This aspiration persisted despite the challenges faced by a stuttering African-American boy in the 1960s. His unwavering commitment to his dream and still in Harvey a life philosophy. You have to dream big and believe that you will succeed. Born Broderick Stephen Harvey on January 17, 1957 in Welch, West Virginia, to Jesse Harvey, a coal miner, and Eloise Vera Harvey, a Sunday school teacher, Steve spent his formative years in Cleveland, Ohio, retaining a deep connection to the city. Although his family had modest means, they found richness in their faith. Prior to attaining stardom, Harvey made a solemn vow to God that if he achieved success, he would express gratitude and spread the word. True to his word, Harvey concludes every show with thanks to God and shares his appreciation with the audience. For Harvey, embarking on a comedy career was an act of faith. 
Encouraged to perform at an open mic comedy night in 1985, he captivated the audience and, spurred by the response, quit his job the next day to pursue his dream. As Harvey articulates, you have to jump and take a leap of faith in order to soar. The path to success was fraught with hardships. Harvey found himself homeless, living in his car, traversing the country for performances. In 1990, victory in a national comedy competition provided his breakthrough on Showtime at the Apollo, propelling his career forward. Today, Steve Harvey stands as one of Hollywood's busiest figures. Beyond his on-screen, radio, stage, and literary endeavors, Harvey serves as a mentor and inspiration to his admirers. Harvey's comedic journey began in the mid-1980s with stand-up performances. In 1997, he joined Cedric the Entertainer, the late Bernie Mac, and D.L. Hewley on the Kings of Comedy tour, culminating in the highly successful comedy special, The Original Kings of Comedy. Harvey's comedic prowess continued with releases such as the popular DVD Don't Trip, He Ain't Through With Me Yet in 2006, followed by Steve Harvey, Still Trippin' in 2008. On August 2, 2012, Harvey concluded his 27-year stand-up career with a two-hour performance at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, broadcast live on pay-per-view. His success in stand-up paved the way for an eight-year tenure as host of It's Showtime at the Apollo, alongside diverse roles encompassing acting, hosting, writing, and producing. Notable television appearances include ABC's Me and the Boys, the WB's The Steve Harvey Show, and various film credits. Harvey achieved widespread recognition as the host of Showtime at the Apollo, marking the beginning of his hosting career. His repertoire includes The Steve Harvey Show, Family Feud, Celebrity Family Feud, Steve, Little Big Shots, and numerous others. Harvey's tenure as the host of Family Feud garnered record high ratings and surpassed previous host Richard Dawson's longevity. Harvey expanded his international presence with hosting duties for Miss Universe and New Year's Eve with Steve Harvey. In 2019, Harvey transitioned his eponymous daytime talk show to Facebook Watch, launching Steve on Watch in January 2020. In the same year, Harvey introduced Family Feud to Africa, filming the show in South Africa and receiving acclaim as one of the continent's most popular programs. Harvey announced a new courtroom comedy series for ABC in 2021, further solidifying his multifaceted television career. Harvey commenced his radio career in 2000 with the Steve Harvey Morning Show, syndicated on over 100 radio stations nationally and reaching over 6 million weekly listeners, making it America's most listened-to syndicated morning show. In addition to his entertainment pursuits, Harvey is a best-selling author. Act like a lady, think like a man, what men really think about, love, relationships, intimacy, and commitment, published in 2009, inspired the 2012 film Think Like a Man, in which he starred. Harvey's other books include Straight Talk, No Chaser, How to Find, Keep, and Understand a Man and Act Like a Success, Think Like a Success, Discovering Your Gift and the Way to Life's Riches. Harvey's viral commentary on taking risks culminated in the New York Times bestseller Jump in 2016. Throughout his career, Harvey has received numerous accolades, including six Daytime Emmy Awards out of 14 nominations, 10 NAACP Image Awards, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2013. His achievements and influence have earned him the distinction of being one of the most recognizable and trusted personalities in media, with a vast audience welcoming him into their homes each year. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.